But yet the devil came and tempted her in her humanity. Correct? So she was fully human without sin. And so she could be tempted in her humanity without having that. So you can be fully human without having a sin nature. In fact, let me put it to you this way. If in our, you and I sin, if we yield to sin, that makes you less human. You with me? Because sin lowers our humanity. So the point being is this. You say, well, I'm just human. We'll be more human by not yielding to sin. You get it? You're more human and I'm more human when I don't yield to sin. When I yield to sin, I'm less than human. I'm human, but I'm less than what I possibly could be. So we cannot, God, thank you, Jesus. I'm just like you. I wrestle with these things. I wrestle with them, right? But I say, well, I'm just human, you know. I can't use that. It's wrong for me to use that as an excuse for sin. So what, I, what, what the Holy Ghost is going to say to us is be more human by not sinning. Praise the Lord. You ever listen to me? Okay, you don't, have, don't lift your hand. It's not confession time. But how many of you have ever been in a situation? Now, we are human. We have human passion. We have human desires. We have, you're with me. I get all of that. But that's different from sinful desires. How many times, though, we get ourselves in, in a situation and say, well, I'm just human, you know. And we apply that statement to something that's wrong in our life. And we know it's wrong. But we say, well, I'm just human. You're less human. Not more human. So the Bible is very clear. That when Satan came to Eve. She was fully human. Without a sin nature. So when the devil came to tempt Jesus. Jesus then how human was he? Fully human. Without a sin nature. Our inward sinful desires. They were not in Jesus. But the temptation was nonetheless real. Because it was given to his human nature. Just like it was given to Eve. And she had to make a choice. Just like Jesus had to make a choice. She happened to make the wrong choice. Sin. Jesus said no. But there was nothing on the inside of him that would answer to those outward temptations that were coming to him. The difference is, is that when they come to you and I, there's something inside of me called evil desire, sinful desire, sinful nature that can respond to that temptation that's coming to me on the outside. That's the difference between you and Jesus. Yes, he walked this earth to show that you and I can live above sin. Yes, He walked this earth to show that you and I can, when we are tempted, we do not have to yield to that because we walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. We use the Word of God to overcome the temptations of the devil. And the Jesus said this to His disciples. He said, pray that you enter not into temptation. So even though Jesus showed you by exemplary life that you and I can live above sin, relying on the power of God's Spirit, being led by the Spirit in the power of the Spirit, and anointed by the Spirit. There's one difference between you and me and, and Jesus. And that is, you got something on the inside of you that can respond to that sin. And not only respond to the outward temptation, but the sinful desire is inside. So that it's not just, brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you something that's helping me. It's not just the actions that we commit. It's the desires that we have. That come from a fallen, 
Adamic, sinful nature. Are y'all with me right now? And I'm, all desires are not bad, but the sinful desires are inside of you. You with you understand that? So the difference between you and Jesus is he did show you and I that when we live by the power of the Spirit, led by the Spirit, in the power of the Spirit, anointed by the Spirit, use the Word of God to defeat the enemy when he comes against us with his lies. We choose the Word of God over his other option. And we pray so that we don't fall into temptation. And we don't use this little statement that we like to use. Well, I'm just human. If I yield to sin, if you yield to sin, we are less than human. So I say to you, be more human. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So in a sense, as I said to you in the previous message, that we're just like Jesus. Jesus is just like us in the sense that he had to overcome temptation by the Spirit, by the Word of God. Amen. By prayer. That's true. But there is a difference he don't have anything inside that will answer to the outward temptations that's coming to him. Unlike you and I, we've got sinful desires. And we've got a sin nature inside. Amen? Are you with me? Hallelujah. But either way, we still can by the power of God's Spirit, the Word of God, and prayer overcome temptation. In the name of Jesus. See, I don't know about you, but I need this. I, really, I, do, I need this because sometimes I think, well, you're just human, you know. <laughs> well, I'm acting less human if I give in. Because you do not have to have a sin nature or sinful desires to be human. Hallelujah. Give God praise. So God says, watch this. God says to Eve. If you eat this fruit, you shall die. He said, it's dangerous for you to eat this fruit. You will die. And here comes Satan with an option. And he says, it'll be good for you. You can grow if you do this. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, it's good for you. You can grow from that. God said it'll kill you. And so even though she didn't have a sinful nature inside of hers, the temptation was still real. Because she had to make the choice between the two. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Watch this. Mark chapter 7. Now, praise God, man. I thank God for the Word of God. Because the Word of God makes us free. So when we look at it then, how human is Jesus? We find out. He doesn't have to have a sin nature or sinful desires inside of him to be completely human. In fact, that makes him more human. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. Man, I'm chopping the devil's head off this morning. I'm, cho I'm chopping the snake's head off this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because that's what he wants to use on us. Well, you're just human, you know. So, yeah, yeah. But have you ever noticed when you yield to sin, how it dehumanizes you? It don't make you a better human. <clears throat> it don't make me a better human. It makes you a worse human. It makes me a worse. It degradates you. It, it's the depravity. The results of that, the, the outcome of sin is death, not life. Wake up in the name of Jesus. The Word of God's waking me up. If it's not waking you up, you're in trouble, my friend. You are in trouble. Because this is the way the enemy works on us. Amen? Now watch this. 
Mark 7. Jesus talks about, he said, For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts. You with me? Evil thoughts. Okay, watch this. Brother, please. Okay, here, here's life. You're going to have these outward temptations that come to you. Correct? Am I preaching to human beings today? Okay. Well, Eve didn't have a fallen nature. She was tempted. Angels didn't have a fallen nature. And they were tempted. Okay. So you talk about evil thoughts or thoughts of evil. There's a difference. An outward temptation of an evil thought comes to you, right? Can you control those thoughts? I mean, can you keep those thoughts from coming to you? No. Those thoughts are going to come to you. Those are thoughts of evil. Right? The analogy, you taught New Life class for a long time. Remember that analogy to help the new converts understand that thoughts of evil are different from evil thoughts. Thoughts of evil are things that come to your mind that they just come from nowhere. You can't control them. He, and, and Billy Graham, and I'm not a big Billy Graham fan, uh, fan, but he's the one that made this statement. He said, evil thoughts are like birds that fly over your head. He said, can you stop the bird from flying over your head? I can't stop the bird from flying over my head. Correct? But I can stop it from building an, a, a nest in my well, in my hair. <laughs> Praise the Lord, brother. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. You get the point. Thanks, brother. So, thoughts of evil I can't control, but you just got to let them keep on going. But when you take the thoughts of evil that come to you and you, okay, grab a hold of them. Amen. And internalize those thoughts. Now they're no, no longer thoughts of evil. They become evil thoughts. Hallelujah. At that point, it becomes sin. Because it's more than a temptation. It's an evil desire, an evil thought that you let get inside of you. And you start meditating on that. And I start meditating on that. And if we had the opportunity, we would fulfill it. Because when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. Are you with me here? Okay. So Jesus had these thoughts of evil, these temptations that came to him, enticements to do wrong. But he never let it get inside of him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In fact, he didn't have, he didn't have that in, internal evil desire anyway. So Jesus, he says, for within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts. Amen. Do you see that? He said thoughts of evil. He said evil thoughts. Sexual morality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, weakness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander. Right? Look at him and say, Wow. Mm, I didn't know I was that bad. I didn't know you were that bad. I mean, look at this. Evil thoughts, sexual morality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, weakness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander. Look at your say, go, wow. That's what's inside of my nature, fallen nature. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. What is it that defiles the person? These things that come from within. These evil desires. Correct? That defiles us. So listen. Everybody listen. Man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. God's words got me standing at the judgment bar of God. And he's saying, guilty, 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 guilty. He's saying to me, you deserve to die. 
Amen? Because you've got this and I have this inside of me. And so what God is saying is this. I want you to see this. So important. Because without taking time and looking at it, you really don't think about it. And if you do, sometimes you come to the wrong conclusion. So what the Bible is telling me is that evil des desires that come from my heart, they're also sinful. Not just when I commit the act. I'm not defiled when I just commit the act. I'm defiled because of those evil thoughts and those sinful sin that's inside of me. Sinful desires. Not every desire, but sinful desires that are in me. Just the desire is sin. Wow. And they go on to produce acts of sin. And obviously, brothers and sisters, that a sinful desire in you is not the same in the sense of consequence as the act of sin. The consequences are not the same. But we have to understand. Hmm, that desire right there, that's sinful. That's not just a human desire. That's a sinful desire. Come on, somebody. That's coming out of my sin nature. Jesus did not have that. Isn't that amazing? So, Lord, help us all. We need a Savior. I need a Savior. You need a Savior. I need to walk in the power of the Spirit. Led by the Spirit. Anointed by the Spirit. Hallelujah. In the power of the Spirit. Using the Word of God to overcome and prayer to not yield to temptation because the desire is also sin. I'm not saying it's the same level as the act because some crazy people <laughs> they say, well, I, I thought it, I desired it, so, I, you know, it's sin. I must as well do it. No. Look at the same and say, No. The consequences are not the same. You understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, don't lift your hand. It's not confession time. But how many of you have ever, you know, had a temptation either came outwardly or from within you? Praise God. Are y'all with me? And the temptation from the enemy was, well, you might as well go ahead and do it because... You know, you, you desire it and it's there and you want it and you might as well do it, right? Have you, don't lift your hands, not confession time. <laughs> don't fall for that lie because the consequences are not the same. Everybody awake? If you are, say praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, there's consequence to sin. It makes you less human for one thing. And it brings death to our life. Amen. So lust when it's conceived brings forth sin. And sin what? Brings forth what? Death. So the effects of sin is death. Jesus took the full effects of sin. Death. When he died on the cross. To me that's what it means when it says he was made sin. He was made to be sin, that we might be made the righteous of, of God in Christ, right? right? To made to be sin, that means that the, the effects of sin, death, he died to remove the effects of sin. Hallelujah. He's my sin offering. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Woo! So when Jesus walked the earth, these outward temptations would come to him. He would have to make a choice. But there was no inward desire, evil desire inside of him. No fallen nature and no evil desire inside of him. But he still exemplified life for us, you and me. Look at this pastor preach. Hear the word of God to you. We have no excuse. You can't even use your humanity to be an excuse. Because we have on the inside of us the most vile, evil nature. It's the seed of the serpent. 
you, are, you and I, all of us here today, and don't forget it, are not only capable of sinning, but because that sin nature that's in you, it compulses you, it drives you to sin against God. Not only capable, but are driven to. And put in the right circumstance, in the right situation, at the right time. Every one of us in this church is capable of committing some of the most vile sin you've ever heard of. Put a period on it. So don't walk around and say, well, you know, I'm, I, I can't be touched with that. Oh, yes, you can. And that, that, old, that lesson you taught, maybe I know Tim did, but... Y'all taught that lesson on New Life course called Call Chosen Faithful. I taught that for years. And some of the things I learned about the Bible, I learned teaching Bible studies. Not preaching to you, teaching Bible studies. Home Bible studies, search for truth. And call chosen faithful. You've got to keep those branches cut back. Because out of that trunk, out of the roots of that sin nature, will grow all of these various sins. And they will come... And choke that new nature out. It just, that's the carnal nature, the sinful nature of man. It just grows and it just chokes out the new nature in us. Come on, church. That's why Paul said this mortify the deeds of the body or flesh. You got to kill them, you got to cut them back. That's why Jesus says, take up your cross. Amen. Deny yourself and follow me. The cross is a picture of suffering. You're going to suffer sometimes when you say no to those desires. It's going to hurt sometimes. It's going to be like a crucifixion. But if you're going to follow Jesus, you got to. And I have to take up my cross. Becoming a Christian is not paradise. It's not always going to be fun. Sometimes it's going to be a crucifixion. It's real. 